and welcome to The Bigger Picture. My name is John Kenny, and I want to let you know that The Bigger Picture is an online platform that we have created because we are all going through difficult times. 2020 has been quite a year uh, for most of us. And, you know, whenever you're going through something difficult, we think that you need to step back and gain greater perspective. And so the reason we created this online platform called The Bigger Picture is to do that. We're trying to step back and see life in a greater way. Today we're going to be doing that. We have a special guest with us that my co-host Unique Mackey is going to introduce to you today. And so thank you for joining us. We know that this is going to be just an incredible conversation for you to hear today. Unique. Our first pilot episode was about peace, the bigger picture of peace. And we asked a critical question, and that is, what if peace wasn't the absence of something, but rather the presence of something? What if peace wasn't the absence of problems, but the presence of Christ? And so it is with that thought in mind, we wanted to introduce Easy Core. His real name is Matthew, but all his friends call him Easy. And Easy has gone through some difficult situations that he'll talk more about during the midst of this pandemic. And Easy has exemplified what it means to have peace. And so I want to introduce to you a great, great friend of, of mine. He has gone through so much over the last few months, and I want Easy to be able to teach all of us how we can maintain peace in the midst of a pandemic. And so, Easy, I want to thank you, man, for just being such a light and an inspiration <clears throat> um, in our community um, to John and us. And That's right. thank you for joining The Bigger Picture. Uh, why don't you tell John and our audience um, where we initially met and, and how we grew to be um, such good friends? Do we have enough time? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, I first met this fella at uh, Georgia Southern many, many years ago. Over what was it? Not too many. No, no, we, we, we ain't that old. <laughs> well, yeah, well, the gray in our beards will probably say <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> yeah, but... Met this fella on the campus of Georgia Southern, man, and uh, he was always a cool fellow walking around. For the longest time, I thought he was from New York, <laughs> you know, and come to find out he was really from Atlanta. I remember, I think you were part of a fraternity, um, the Omegas, yeah. and um, y'all used South to know how, yeah, yeah. Y'all used to have, have a real good time on campus, didn't you? Yeah, we did a little yeah. bit. You know, we did lots of community service. We did everything that we were supposed to do. We were wholesome. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really did have a good time, man. And, uh, you know, anytime you're in a, any kind of social organization or fraternal organization, you know, you, the, the eyes of campus are on you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you do promote this, promote that. You're doing different things around the, the campus. And, yeah, so you kind of get well known from yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, we, we, we have... Um Obviously, in, in school, we, we didn't uh, know each other very well. But, you know, over the last few months, I can honestly say that, that uh, we've grown closer and you've become a, a real inspiration in our community um, to myself right. and um, to John. And, and we just want to thank you for your time and um, really being the epitome of what it means to have peace. Yeah, you know... The, uh, the thing that is so amazing about your story that has hit me and I think so many others, and I just met you just today, just before this yeah. interview, but I feel like I know you in some way, is that you have gone through pain, yet what has been maintained in the midst of that pain is your peace. And so we want to understand how to have peace in the middle of pain because folks are going through things but you've gone through incredible pain still living in that the the community got some difficult news on august 9th tell mm -hmm. us about that well on august 9th um 
that is when I got the news, and of course it was the community that my wife, Yolanda Core, who was um, a nurse over at Augusta University Medical Center, she passed away due to complications from COVID-19, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, a gut-wrenching, heartbreaking feeling for myself and uh, my two boys and my family uh, as well, and her family, of course, you know, for sure. Um, but this is, I'm gonna tell you guys this too, this is kind of unrelated to her, but not many people know that a week later, my best friend died. Mm. It wasn't from COVID, but he died too. So Goodness. she died on the 9th, he died on the 15th. In August. In August. But not a lot of people know that because a lot of focus has been on, you know, me dealing with her. Right. But I've also had to kind of deal with that because he was, we grew up together, best man of my wedding. I was the best man at his wedding. You know, so back to back weekends, I dealt with that. But not a lot of people know that. I'm not saying that. For a pat on the back. Oh no, no! I mean, thank you for I just, sharing that. I, I meant to context. tell you that, that you know, I meant to tell you that the last time you and I talked, uh, but just didn't get around to it. So that was, you know, dealing with that, you know, didn't make it any easier, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, so I had to deal with that, you know, back to back weekends. You know, I I buried my wife one weekend and find out he died and his funeral was the next, and then they asked me to speak at his funeral. Um, I, of course, I could have turned it down, right? You know, um, but they wanted to give me the opportunity to at least say no. Mm -hmm. um, so they did ask me, and you know, by the strength from God, I was able right. to get up there and do my two or three minute spiel for him because I felt I owed him that because it was my best friend, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Um, so I, you know, I made it through, and then with all that aside, I still, like I said, found peace in all of this. Just because I know the Lord is working on me, my family, and my support system um, has been amazing, and it actually has brought me peace. Now it's not obviously I'll never get over it, right, the right. death of my wife or him, but you know more importantly my wife. But the goal is to get through it. Yeah. You know, I won't get over it, but to get through it, and that's the peace part of the peace that I have. How, how old was your wife? Uh, Forty. She just turned forty in June. So young. And your boys, how old are they? Uh, eight uh, and five. Okay. My, my five-year-old just turned five in September, so about a month and a half after she passed away. Goodness. Evan and Maddox. Yes, Evan's my oldest. He's eight. Maddox is my youngest. He's the, the five-year-old. Wow. What, what keeps you going during these difficult times? Because you, you, you say you have maintained your peace. The loss of your wife one week lost of your best friend the next week. Can you help our audience understand what peace looks like in the midst of that level of pain? <laughs> <clears throat> oh man, I don't know what, what it's kind of hard to put in the words what actually peace looks like. I tell you, peace to me is our Evan and Maddox. Mm -hmm. they, they are actually, you know, obviously the Lord is, that's who, over everybody, right. everything is yeah. giving me the peace yeah. and the strength Using to them. get through yes. to get through all this. But those two boys are what really brings me peace, and they keep me going. They keep me motivated because mm. I know I can't stop. Wow, she wouldn't want me to stop. Yeah, and if I stop, then what are they going to do? Mm. They can't see. Okay, I lost my mom, and now my dad is over in the corner, balled up all day every day. Mm. I have to keep going for them because I know that's what she would want. You know, I and I have my bad days, you know, yeah. my bad moments during the day. Um, but I know I have to keep going for them. I have to. And, you know, I have to be strong for them. They're strong for me. They've helped me in ways that they don't even know. It. So they are what motivates me, and they are my peace to get me through. You know, we, the first time we talked, we talked about peace. This is all peace part two, but in a mm -hmm. very real way. It's easy to just talk about peace right. and to get all theological mm -hmm. and share about peace. And, you know, we said peace is the presence of God, not the absence of something in your life. So it's easy to talk about that. And you're like sitting here talking about, talking about it. The presence of God is what we said. But when you were sharing, I was like, that is so true, so powerful that peace is also the presence of other people in our lives. Because you just named your boys, Evan and Maddox, for you are like God's presence, very 100%. real in your life. I mean, <laughs> I, that just hit me. Like, it's not, 
it, uh, it's also the people we surround ourselves with, yeah. man, that bring us what we need, I think. Is that what you're saying? Yes, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like I said, they are definitely my piece. And I have a wonderful support system, wonderful support system that's <clears throat> Friends, family, coworkers, whoever. You too, man. That's I've amazing. had a you know wonderful group of people to help me get through it. But like I said, those two boys are really, you know, they're my heart, my inspiration, and my motivation to you know continue to get through this. And they probably always will be, yeah. you know, later on down the line. I just want to, you know, hopefully they'll see the strength in me that they'll continue to be stronger as they get older, as well. Yeah. How are they handling it? If we can, can we ask that? No, nah, yeah, ask, <laughs> ask whatever. Uh, they are doing, they're doing fine. Uh, my five-year-old, I think he understands a little bit, but maybe not as much as my eight-year-old. Um, my five-year-old, he has moments where at night he may, you know, cry out for her. Uh, mm -hmm. He may see a picture if I take him to see her at, her, at the at the uh, cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, but he's gotten better. He doesn't really have those moments as, as much. Uh, my eight-year-old is <laughs> that <laughs> old man. That that fella is is has been a rock. Wow. A rock wow. for me. Um, you know, he initially actually when we found out, he cried and had his emotions. But it's like from then on, I guess he's just a godsend. Like, all right, I have to be here to make sure my dad is good. <laughs> Because he he really hasn't shown much emotion since, and I know some people are like, well, you know, you need to make sure he's not having it bottled up or holding all in, and I and I'm doing my best to make sure it's not the case. Right. You know, I have his teachers at school checking on him; he's doing fine in school. I talk to him on a regular. I'm, hey, if you ever need to talk, let me know. Let's talk, whatever the case may be. But if if there's a time I'm crying, you know, I feel an arm or hand. On my back, on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Dad, you okay? Are you okay? Or why are you crying? And I tell him he'll come hug me. Mm -hmm. uh, when Maddox is having a moment, he's hugged him and told him it'll be okay. He said, "Hey, Dad, he can come get in the bed with you if he needs to." Wow. Uh, one story in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry. So my uh -huh. September twenty fifth would have been my wife and I tenth tenth anniversary. Goodness. So anyway, when we got married, uh, uh, a buddy of mine gave us an expensive bottle of champagne, and she did not want to open that bottle. Then she wanted to wait for our tenth year anniversary. Mm. Um, Obviously, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So the day before her funeral, the boys and I got to go see her on our own. And uh, I'm talking to her like, hey, I'm still, you know, unfortunately, you won't, you're not here, but I still have that bottle. Cause that bottle sat in our refrigerator for 10 years. <laughs> and um, so I'm talking to her like, hey, well, I guess I'm, you know, still try to do whatever I can to celebrate our 10th anniversary. In my eight years old, is like, Dad, well, you know, you can still open that bottle. Wow. Um, you just get a picture of mom, put it next to you. Wow. And you can still open that bottle and celebrate. Mm. And <laughs> I just kind of like, well, all right, I guess I need to suck it up. <laughs> Say you old it. <laughs> Telling me what to do. You should have you know? gave him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for, for bringing that yeah, up. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, that just exemplifies, exemplifies the strength that he has um, as an eight-year-old and the insight he has to to put that in context to realize that physically she's not here and physically we can't celebrate our anniversary the way we want to, but I still can celebrate her in the way that uh, he mentioned. And you as a father, he loves you, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have boys and to, he knows your heart and he's looking out for your heart. That's just amazing the way your boys are, are giving you that strength, yeah. man. I mean, goodness, they saw what you needed. That's 
Mm-hmm. And, wow. and what I don't want our audience to miss, and again, man, thank you hmm. oh, yeah. for sharing this. Um, you, your tears are going to strengthen That's right. others, man. Um, so <laughs> just, just your level of transparency and... <laughs> I'm, I can't wait to see um, what God continues to do in and through your family. And I want to make sure we don't miss this because God knows what we're going to go through before we do. And when, and when the Bible says that he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, those two boys mm. were a part of him supplying that need. Mm-hmm. For sure. And we oftentimes look at God's, God's grace and, and sometimes we, we miss the conduit. We, we, we look around and we're like, okay, God, I want you to do something, <laughs> but we miss God uses people, mm-hmm. right? Like every time God wants to do That's something, right. In the earth, he uses. That's the whole story of Scripture. Every time God uses people, and for your and for Evan and Maddox, yeah, at this age, amazing to be used by God. I I, I don't I don't want to skate by that. I don't want to overlook that they are being used by God. No, I, I believe a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I I know that. They are, and like I said, they've helped me in more ways than they know or probably will ever know. No I matter mean, how many times I tell them uh, or will tell them in the future, they, you know, they've, again, they have given me strength or been stronger than I have, you know, um, and they've been super helpful. And, and the fact that God is using them for that has helped me find that peace mm-hmm. and made it, I won't say easier to deal with, but I guess tolerable, more tolerable to deal with. Uh, Cause like I said, there's nothing that I'll ever get over. It's just getting through it, and they definitely helped me, or helping me to get through it. You know. You know, when people go through things, I'm just sitting here thinking. You know, people have been hit by things this year. Mm-hmm. Most people not to the level of what you've yeah. experienced. So our listeners are hearing this and, you know, people start, comp- well, gosh, I shouldn't be uh, complaining or this or that when somebody's gone through that. You know, everybody goes through things in different ways. But what's interesting to me is that when pain hits a person, when suffering hits a person, sometimes they go in the opposite direction of what you're saying. Yeah. What has kept you where you are. I know the boys, right? <laughs> so that's for, and I think that's obvious. Your boys have kept you, you, you know, you've still got to be their father. You, yeah. You're here that. I've got to guide them. Sometimes people fall apart though. And look, and yeah. you know, we're allowed to fall apart obviously, but, but you got to keep going for them and that what's kept you where you are and not going the other direction. People go in really yeah, bad yeah, directions. Yeah. No, sometimes. No. Everybody doesn't respond the way that you responded. Uh, you know, and that's the thing, you know, I'll answer your question in a second. But, you know, you say that everybody else respond to what I have. You know, you said I'm an inspiration. And I'm, I am and I tell you, if I, I don't know how I'm an inspiration. I'm not doing anything extraordinary. I'm just trying to be I myself. I would argue with that, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to be myself and be the best man and father I can mm-hmm. to my kids. It's not like I'm purposely going out and saying, "All right, this is the blueprint of what I'm doing," mm-hmm. right? In the in these in you know during these times, um, but to answer your question, a hundred percent, I have to give all the credit to God. All the credit has to go to God, a hundred percent, a thousand percent, because obviously without Him, without my faith in Him, I may have veered mm-hmm. off the the beaten path. You know, I may have went to a dark corner. You know, but He has helped me mm-hmm. do this. He's put people in my life to help me get through this mm. um it's funny if you say that and i'm answering that question is when my before my wife passed while she was in the hospital sick it were i it seemed like you know she had people that were taking care of her on the inside because i couldn't go see her mm-hmm. but they were kind of reporting to me 
and I had people, a lot of people checked on me on the, on the outside, but there were a certain group of people that checked on me constantly, religiously, and and it hit me one day. I'm like, man, the Lord has angels on the inside helping mm-hmm. her, mm-hmm. and he's appointed these angels to me. It was five of them, five people, and they all each served a different purpose mm-hmm. in my life at that time to help me get through that. This is before she passed. This is why she, when she was in getting sick, and those same people are still helping me and with me and help guide me through even afterwards. Goodness. Um, because once, you know, you know, typically once somebody passes away, it gets quiet. Yeah. You know, you have a thousand people yeah. checking on you prior yeah. to, but once they cast the clothes and they put the dirt over it, everybody mm-hmm. goes back to their normal life, mm-hmm. but not me. Right. You know, so, it, you know, it, it gets a little quiet then, but 100% God has given me the strength. I know it comes from him. And then, like I said, he won't let me ball <laughs> up. He's not going to let me, hmm. you know, and I'm probably jumping a gun, but that kind of, it kind of puts me in the mind of the Jeremiah 29, 11 verse, mm-hmm. you know, and which my wife so loved. Mm-hmm. She had it on her board wow. um, in her office that, you know, as long as you trust and believe pretty much mm-hmm. in God's work, yeah. in his words, you know, he's got a, he's going to provide for you. Mm. He's going to provide a future for you. That's right. You just have to stick to his script or believe and have faith, and he'll provide for you. I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah. I, I want to make sure our audience doesn't miss this because I want it to be extremely practical so, because I want people who are suffering to walk away with some clear next steps. When you're suffering through immense pain, Make sure you focus on what you do have yeah. versus what you don't. And the reason I say that is because it's clear that Easy has put his energy into what God has blessed him with versus being angry about what he could feel God has taken away. And the reason that's so key for me, Easy, is because you you know my story. I lost both of my parents to AIDS. Mm-hmm. And when, 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 when I felt like God took my parents away and I responded very negatively mm-hmm. when there were some things I could have been more receiving of and thankful for, but I didn't have that attitude initially and I had to go through more pain because of that. And so, again, the reason I said I would argue with you that what you're doing isn't extraordinary is because I'm, I'm speaking first and, and, and I'm, I'm one of the, um, the pastors at the table. I did not respond the way that you did. So I want people to understand that, that no matter how, how faithful you consider yourself, we, we, we all run the risk of turning away from God and, and being angry because we miss the blessings of what he has given us when we focus on uh, what we don't have. And so that's key. And then the other point I want to make sure that people understand is that God's strength, when we allow him to, mm-hmm. will be made perfect in our weaknesses, because it sounds like what you're saying is, I know that there's something greater than me <laughs> that's allowing me. Am, am I putting words no, in your no, mouth? No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's right. That's, that's right. Because it's, it's, it's not me. I can't take any credit for it. I said, I know where my strength comes from. Like I said, when I told you and when we talked before, um, and you're right, I have to focus on the things I have because I can, I can be mad at what I don't have, and obviously that's my wife, and I would love for her to still be here. But, you know, I'm, I'm blessed and, you know, still have those two boys that are a byproduct of her, you know. So, of course, I see her in them. And uh, mm-hmm. I still plan on raising them the way that her and I mm-hmm. talked about raising them, doing the things that we talked about doing sure. with and for them. But like I said, I I can't turn my back on God. He's done so much for me in my life. Even aside from you know my wife being gone, I you know I, he's done so much for my me, my family, I- anything you know. So I can't turn my back on as angry as I could be, or you know I could say why, but I can't you know question him. He doesn't make mistakes, you know. Um, and and I honestly haven't 
been mad with him during this this situation. You know, I, I've talked to other people, you know, my dad are close to us. I've other family members who are, you know, I mean, I know God doesn't make mistakes, but I think He made a mistake with this one. I'm like, I see, I see you what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I understand that, but He doesn't make mistakes, and everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I knew, you know, and I know. He knows when we're gonna die. He knows when we're every move we make. He knows it. Then when we got married, September twenty fifth, two thousand ten, he knew that we wouldn't make it to ten years, mm. to what the exact ten year mark, you know. And but I was thankful. I've known him for eighteen years. I'm thankful for the time I had with her and got to know her, and you know, for the two boys that we had, you know. So I'm thankful for that. I think you know? that's why we sit here. You know, I know. Uh, sitting here going, what would it feel like to sit in your seat? You know, I think most people would say, I don't want to sit in that seat, <laughs> right. if we're being honest. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Would, I wouldn't put this <laughs> yeah. on anybody. Yeah. But I, this I, on think, I think what's so amazing to us is your peace. I mean, it, it's, like I said, it's easy to preach about right. peace. It's easy to talk about peace. People are going through difficulty. But, I mean, you don't have to be a hero. It's almost like you just have to cling to God is what you're saying. And, yeah. and, and, and the peace that you're experiencing that says in one scripture in Philippians, it surpasses human understanding. Mm-hmm. And sometimes even I'm sitting here listening to you. I'm like, how do you have this? That's my humor. <laughs> right. I'm the, it's not supposed to make I sense. I know. Yet. And I'm the preacher and I'm yeah. supposed to know this. But when you talk to somebody, the most incredible people I've ever been around, are people who have experienced incredible pain and have peace. I know people who have lost children. I know people who have lost spouses. I know people who have gone through things. I know people who are dying of cancer. I know, and they have, their peace, I, I go, I need that. Like, and, and they always tell me it's not a thing, it's a person. So, Easy, you, you commented on a message, Unique was telling me about this, that he gave a sermon, and it was 1 Thessalonians 5.18, which says this. Listen to this, y'all. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I'm like, man, that's easy to do when things are going well, but it says all circumstances. And you commented on that. What, what was that about? What would you say? So, you know, it, obviously God has a funny way of putting things before you when you're not expecting it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would just, you know, like I told you earlier, I have good times and bad times. Sure. And then, you know, sometimes you're just kind of sitting there and your mind's wandering off and you get a little sad or, you know, whatever the case may be. And I would just, you know, scroll through Facebook and come across his message. I caught it right maybe like a minute or two before. I said, oh, let me click on that and just watch it. And probably about a minute after that, it went into that verse. Mm. And it wow. it just shed a whole lot of light on things, you know, because, and I told him, I said, man, I needed that, mm. you know, because you do have to sit there and in spite of everything that's going on, you have to be thankful, not in some circumstances, not in good circumstances, not in bad, but all circumstances. Not just when he gives you money, you be thankful, but even <laughs> in times of death, you have to be thankful. And that goes back to what I said to you guys earlier. I'm thankful that I still have the support group I have, the uh, the five mm-hmm. angels mm-hmm. that I said that was put, yeah. you know put around me, and my boys. Mm-hmm. It's so much that I have still to be thankful for. Obviously, I would love for Yolanda to be here. Yeah. I, I would like not to be even doing this right, podcast right, right. and interview, to be uh-huh. honest with you. Yeah. Um, but there are so many other things that I still have to be thankful for. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still up here alive for my boys, yeah. you know, and continue her legacy on. Um, so I'm definitely, you know, thankful for that. And like I told him, I said, man, I, I needed that. And it just kind of put a different perspective on things that you do have to be thankful in, in everything, you know, because he never said it's going to be easy. Right. No, 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 no. Clearly, <laughs> it's not yeah. going to be easy. Like life's, life's a game and it's certainly on expert. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's, 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 and then there's no cheat code. No, no cheat no cheat code. Like this is not easy. Well, he's the cheat code. Yeah, yeah. He's oh, the that's cheat good. Code. He's the cheat code. Well, you know, that's just, just to chime in on that for one second is I think sometimes Christianity gets presented as it's all going to be easy. It is not true. It, you go through difficulty 
and suffering. It's part of the Christian journey. We don't know when it's coming. I often say it's like a wave at the beach. You know, you build your sandcastle and then the wave comes and, and then another one comes. We just have no idea when that's going to happen. And so, I mean, I, I your story and, and the inspiration and how you walked with Christ in it and been a light for him, man, is is so powerful. And it demonstrates to people. I think people need to hear that when you're going through something difficult, it doesn't mean that you're, you're less of a Christian or you can't, you are pushing through this, not just getting through, not forget, pushing through. Yeah. And, and it's just so inspirational. Yeah, still human, not is. perfect by far. I was still human. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But, but again, practical steps for our audience. Mm. What is your perspective of your pain? Meaning, can I be thankful because I, I believe that my pain is going to lead to God's plan? And so I think it's very important for all of us as we go through the valleys of life to understand that um, God is with us and that we still have things to be thankful for, even not if it's about this life, right? Because uh, you will see Yolanda again. Mm-hmm. She will see the boys again. Wow. There, There is something still to be thankful for, if, if nothing other than this isn't the only life we're going to live, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, yeah. and so what I love about what you're saying is your faith has become realer in the midst of this storm. And that, uh, that again, is something to be thankful for. Yeah. And... I just I just know that God is going to continue to encourage you, open up doors and, you know, allow you and and Evan and Maddox and the relationship and with all those angels just to continue to to flourish. What what have you been doing on a daily basis to kind of, you know, continue to help you maintain this positive perspective? Uh, Pray. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, that's I guess that would be the obvious answer to that to that question. Pray for sure. Mm. Um, my two boys are probably some of the most active eight and five year olds you ever meet. So they keep me busy, yeah. uh, which is good. I keep them busy, which is uh, which is good. Uh, so that kind of keeps me keeps me going. So I don't have a lot of downtime, mm. uh, even though I know I probably should have some downtime. But <laughs> we we keep going. We just, we just we just going because that's how it was before she passed away. Yeah. So we're just trying to keep things as normal as I can for them. Um. I have, I guess, journal directly slash indirectly. Um, I, since she's passed, uh, I think people have sent me two or three journals to write because they say, you know, it's therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and at first I wasn't writing anything. Well, let me let me step back. I never really wrote anything down. She was always the one that would write things down, plan stuff out. She'd get a calendar, like, hey, will you have this date? Will you have this date? And you get <laughs> stuff all over the calendar. I just kind of go with it. Uh, but when she was sick, I said, you know what? Just to help me, so when she comes through, she gets better, I can say, look, here's what happened this day, this day, that day. So I actually started journaling then. Hmm. Just each day I would write down, hey, this happened. The boys did this. The boys did that. This is why she was still alive but was sick. Um, that way I could show it to her. And it also helped me to remember, mm-hmm. like, you went from this extreme to this extreme. You were this sick, but you got well on this day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do have that. And then people have since then said to continue that, him being one. Um, but I didn't always initially write it. And I would post things on Facebook. And then another friend of mine said, hey, you wrote in that journal? And I said, no, not physically, no. He says, you know, you're journaling, whether you realize it or not, even though you may not be writing it down true. on yeah. paper. Uh, and then when she was sick, a friend of mine said he had a dream that when she came, when she got out of the hospital, she was going to write a book. Mm. Uh, Obviously, that's not going to happen, but maybe him and I talked about this. Maybe I don't I don't know. I don't see myself writing a book, but whatever God's plan is for me, and I guess it's his plan. 
made, like he gave me some advice on how to journal and, and, and maybe it'll all come through into some type of book, mm. well, you know, kind of like yeah. your situation. Yeah. Um, that's one of the ways. Another way I've kind of dealt with it, and it may be crazy to some, um, but it's like I almost face the, the fact that she's not here. You know, I, I face, I put myself in the fire just to see if I can deal with it or to kind of get it out of the way. Um, meaning, you know, when most people lose a loved one, they don't want to go into that room or don't want to go back into the house or touch the clothes because everything's going to be left the same way it was before sure. they left, just like our house was. Everything was the way it was when I took her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So when she passed, you know, you just kind of go, I went in there and just said, you know what, I just got to embrace it. She's not here. Let's get this out of the way because running from it would not save you. Mm. So I, you know, people won't look at the clothes. They won't go in the drawers. They won't smell the scents. I, mm. I went in there and I guess like a TV, some off TV, you know, I went through the closet, looked at the clothes, touched the clothes, smelled the clothes. You know, I laid across the bed. Wow. You know, I went into the bathroom open up the drawers where makeup was and, you know, looked at that stuff, you know. But that's the, that was kind of, you know, sense therapeutic to me. Not, mm -hmm. It may not be the best for everybody else, you know, because whether they can handle it or not, I don't know. But that's, I just I always been kind of the one that's, all right, this is what's going on. This is a bad situation. I need to throw myself in it. For whatever reason, I don't know, but it kind of, it helps me. It may not help you, it may not help you, but it helps me. I think it's something <laughs> biblical to that. You know? um, I, I, I like to call it in, enduring versus exiting. Um, the Bible says that for the joy set before Christ, he endured the cross. And uh, because he endured the cross, he is now sitting um, at the right hand of the Father. So it's something about embracing your pain that will put you in your purpose. Um, Jesus' purpose was to serve at the right hand of God's throne. So he got there through embracing the cross and that put him in his ultimate position of purpose. Mm. So when I hear you say, you know what, Unique, it may sound crazy, which doing Christian things usually do. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's nothing that makes sense about um how we serve God and, and our faith, etc. And so, yeah, it does sound crazy to really immerse yourself in that pain, mm -hmm. but I do think it's something supernatural that happens at that point because as we said, his strength is made perfect in that weakness. And so I think that is an opportunity for God to show up even greater and through that push you even further um, into the purposes that he has for you. So, yeah. again, it, I don't I don't care what you say. What you're doing <laughs> is extraordinary. You know, it's it's super natural. You you you're a natural man, like you say. I make mistakes, unique. I don't I don't have good days every day. But that's not what a Christian lifestyle is. It says right. a righteous man falls seven times, gets up, again. but he gets up again. So. It's, it's not about perfection. It's about persistence. And I think I sent you a text, you know, um, if you don't mind me sharing, you know, easy was saying, you know what, you need, I, I just had a bad day, man. I, you know, some things didn't go the way I planned. And I, and, and just to sum it all up, I was like, man, don't you dare think about beating yourself up, man. Um, you're in, you're enduring, like things are not going to go perfect. That's an unrealistic expectation, man. Um, you running circles around these dads out here, man. Like I said, I, straight up, when I, said, I was like, man, I think I'm an excellent father and you make me feel like crap, bro. Like, 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 like please stop sharing, man. But I said, like, but I said, damn, that's not my purpose in this day. You know? Like you make me like a deadbeat dad, man. Like, but again, like for you all that are struggling. Yeah. It is okay. You're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Nobody understands what's going on. Nobody went to school for this. But as long as you get back up, if you don't walk away from this um, with anything else, know that you can get back up. Know that you can endure. And um, God can bring purpose out of your pain. So... I just want to thank you, bro. Yeah, um, thank I want to you guys honor for having you. Me. Thank you guys for having me. You're amazing, man. I 
I it's appreciate it. I appreciate such it. Such an inspiration. You know, as we're closing this up, I was thinking about this. There are times, oftentimes, actually, at a celebration of life service is what I call it. But, you know, sometimes yeah. people say a memorial service, a funeral service. I'll often start by saying what we feel like right now is crawling up in God's lap and we want to pound on his chest <laughs> and at the same time we want him to just embrace us and I just kept having that image about you know on the bad days sometimes you just it, and whether it's anger and some people may be angry at yeah. God yeah. I, I like to say to people it's okay it's to pa- he can take it pound on his chest if you need to ask the why question ask the why question all that. but then let God embrace you and that can't be said in a typical sermon, really, without mm-hmm. the reality of what you've seen here. I mean, right, you are seeing right. a man right. who has let God embrace him in the most difficult pain. So thank you for yeah. sharing your no story. Problem. Thank you for having me. I'm glad I was able to. Yeah. And we want to we wanna be able to support um, you. I, I know that um, you and the boys, you all um, have needs. That's right. Um, you're doing an excellent job of, of, of continuing to push and provide for them. But still, um, if there is anybody that would like to support, uh, we do have a GoFundMe set up um, for Easy and his two boys. And so that information will be on your screens. Uh, please feel free to, to support him and, and his family as he continues to uh, turn his adversity into purpose. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank really you. Appreciate you being here. Yeah. Friends, as we close this out, I, I just want us to remember that peace is possible and really probable in your life if you will focus on the presence of God rather than always the problem. And we've seen that in a very real way today. So our next episode is going to air. We are airing the Bigger Picture episodes on the first Wednesday of each month. So the next one will be December 2nd, but I don't want to push there too quickly except to tell you it's coming. And then we would really love it if you would share this story with others. So share it through the media and the platforms that we have. Tell your friends. There are people, not just you, but in your life, in your circle, family, friends, coworkers, People that if you just hit the share button are going to just hear this story and it's going to speak to them. So please share it because y'all stepping back and seeing God at work and seeing the bigger picture is what it's all about. Thank you for joining us. Mm